Hi, this tutorial is to walk you through the use of the jump software to perform one sample hypothesis tests for the mean as well as to construct um, one sample confidence intervals for the mean. So the first step is to load some data into jump and there are other tutorials on that. So I have a data set here on tire life uh, when we have a different type of rubber composite used. And the first thing we want to do is to construct a confidence interval for the mean lifetime of this rubber composite. So in order to do this, we come up and jump to the toolbar here. And on Windows, it'll look a little different, but overall, it should look the same. And we click on Analyze, and then go to Distribution. When the distribution screen pops up, we can just slot in our variable of interest to the Y columns field and press OK. Now our results screen pops up and what I like to do is I like to press the red option tab next to distributions and press stack in order to get a horizontal display of the results. Next you can see that all we have right now we have a histogram and box plot we have some quantiles and some the sample mean and sample standard deviation now at this point we could use the output to construct confidence intervals by hand um, but we want to do more than that so to formally pull up confidence intervals we go to the red option tab next to tire life it'll change based on the name of the variable and we can go to confidence intervals now we select our confidence interval. Let's say we want a 90% confidence interval. And if we select that, you'll see that we get 90% confidence intervals for both the mean and the standard deviation. Okay. And we can set different levels of alpha as we choose. Next, what we'd like to do is determine whether or not the tire life here uh, raised the bar over 60,000 miles. So we're going to test whether or not the mean is greater than 60,000 miles. So in order to carry out a hypothesis test, we click the red option tab next to tire life. We can scroll down to uh, tests for the mean, and you can see that that's going to calculate a t-test or z-test, which is what we've talked about in class. We click here and it opens up a screen. Well, I said that we were hypothesizing 60,000 miles, so this is what would be happening under the null hypothesis. And the second field says, if you know the standard deviation, enter it in here. If you do know the standard deviation, this will then utilize the normal distribution. If you leave this blank, we have to estimate the standard deviation, so it will use the t distribution. Pressing OK, we get the results of our hypothesis test over here under the test mean section. And you can see that it gives you the hypothesized value, which is mu under the null hypothesis. It gives you the estimate used for the mean, so that's x bar in our case. It will give you the degrees of freedom for the t distribution if a t distribution is used. And it also gives you the sample standard deviation. Next, in the field down here, this is the really convenient part of JUMP. It gives us all the information we need for our test. The first thing it gives us is the value of the test statistic. Now here, that's 0.1533. Before, we'd have to take this to a t-table and then figure out what the heck was happening, but we don't have to do that anymore. It gives us three options for our p-value. The first option you can see is that it says the probability that t is greater than the absolute value of t. This is your two-tailed p-value. The second option is your upper-tailed p-value, and the third option is your lower-tailed p-value. So really, you just have to match up the sign of the alternative hypothesis, and if it's not equal to, we use the first option. So then we're done. We're, we're done with the hypothesis test. Another slick thing that I will show you is if you go up here in the option next to test mean, we can get an animation explaining p-values to us a little bit. So the first one here is showing what our two-sided p-value looks like. 
Now we are testing the high side, so we can click high side or one tailed, upper tailed p-value, and it'll give it to us. So that's a nice thing too if you're if you want to be more clear. It's interactive. Okay, so that's that's how we do this, and uh, now you know.